are here to listen to a distinguished lecturer. I would like to join in welcoming you all, and in particular, our distinguished lecturer, Professor Banji Akintuye, to this event. As chairman of the selection committee of the Obafemi Awolowo Leadership Award, I would like to add a few comments to what both <laughs> the executive director and our chairman have said about there being no award for this year. The selection committee considered several names of distinguished personalities submitted to it by our intellectually endowed members of the technical committee. I would like here to thank the members of the technical committee for their diligence and very painstaking efforts. <laughs> regrettably, regrettably, while some of the names they submitted could be said to have demonstrated some of the attributes for which Chief Obafemi Awolowo was known, the selection committee did not think that any of the candidates combined those attributes to a degree that if selected would be universally acclaimed as truly approximating to what Chief Obafemi Awolowo represented in his life. It may be recalled here that the two recipients of the award so far, Professor Wulesho Inka and former South African President Thabo Mbeki, were widely acknowledged as having demonstrated in their careers the attributes that characterized Chief Obafemi Awolowo's political career, namely great integrity, impressive cerebral capacity, consistency in his convictions, and pro-people's attitude in his personal philosophy and public service. And above all, impeccable patriotism and love of country without counting the cost of personal sacrifice involved in all his pronouncements and activities. I have often wondered how Nigeria's founding fathers, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, Chief of Bafemi Awolowo, and Sir Amadou Bello, how they would feel if they were to rise from the dead to see the Nigeria as it is today. I have no doubt that lamentation and grievous disappointment would be their feeling, especially for Chief Obafemi Awolowo, who championed the cause of true federalism and as Premier effected the impressive socio-economic development of the western region of Nigeria. Chief Awolowo would be disappointed to find that instead of a few viable federating units in which effective human and economic development can be planned and pursued with security better policed and maintained, we now have what I would describe as a plethora of non-viable federating units with an all-powerful central government, competition for the control of which fuels the do-or-die politics which in turn exacerbates the ethnic and religious divisions within the country. Indeed, 
he and his fellow founding fathers would find a country where impunity and disregard for court orders by government institutions where that obtains. A country where worthy societal values have virtually collapsed and been replaced by inter earlier self-centered pursuit of money. And they would also find that the national unity which they struggled to pursue and progressed is now very greatly weakened by the prevailing nature of the politics and governance within the country. And so as we mark today the 108th birthday of the sage, with today's lecture, I urge all my countrymen and women, especially our media, our youth, some of whom are represented here, our political leaders and legislators, and all those who are involved in government and civil institutions, I urge all of them to invoke the attributes of Chief of Bafemi Awolo and seek to emulate them in all that they do. That is the message that I would like to leave with you today. And I thank you for your attention.